Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignDetectives.com. Well we've been doing a little series on some Divi hover effects that you can create yourself really easily. We've got a sort of drop down call to action there, slide in one. And yesterday we did this sort of zoom in blurb module. Today we've got a sort of spin in call to action for you. And we're using no coding with this today, no plugins involved. Really easy to do with the inbuilt features of the Divi theme itself. If you enjoy this video today, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It lets me know whether or not to make more videos on a particular topic or not. Okay, well, let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, I'm going to go down to where we want to work. I've simply got a row here, the green tab with three columns in it. And as with most of these other image to text type hover effects, the actual image resides in the column rather than the background of the module itself. You can fade one image to another using the background with a module and a column. But today we're just putting an image in the column and using a call to action module to spin in. So I'm going to add a new module and this will work with any module. Divi by standard comes with all these light gray modules here. Plenty of them to just about build any sort of site. You also get an extra dozen if you've got WooCommerce installed to help you arrange your products. So I'm looking for a call to action module right here. There it is. I'm going to leave it at the default. You put your custom title in there, whatever you want to have your button say right there. As you can see, or as you can't see, there's no button there at the moment. That won't show up till you put a link in for it. Your content goes down here, obviously. So if I go down to the link now, and just put a hashtag in in place of a link, button link can go there. Best practice, if you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If you're linking off site, put it in a new tab so your site stays open. And there's another link just down below for the whole module. So you can have your button going one place and the module going elsewhere. Of course, you can have them both linking to the same place as well if you want to. Okay. Well, I'll leave that as it is for the moment and we'll start playing with some things. If we go over to our design here, one thing I will mention, I'm not going to actually do this because it, it's working for me as it is. If you've got a different amount of text in your call to action module, which is pretty common, you might want to go into your sizing and give it a fixed height or a minimum height. That way you can keep all of your little blocks the same height. So that's in design and sizing. And you can either give it a fixed height or a minimum height because sometimes if you've got a lot of text in there minimum height's better than fixed height because on mobile devices it can get a little longer but I'm going to leave mine as is I don't need that today but you might if you've got different amounts of text okay so we got our blurb module in there let's flip it how we want it to start out and to do that still on the design tab I'm going to go right down to the bottom to transform and you'll find some tabs right here and we want the middle one rotate today so I'm going to click on rotate and I'm going to flip it 180 degrees so it's upside down basically if we roll down a bit so you can see you can increment up and down with the little arrows here if you need to or you can just type in a value if you want to great so when it starts out it wants to be that that way up and when we end up it wants to be right way up so common to most Divi modules, if you roll up over the dark transform right here, you'll find a bunch of icons. If you hit the little arrow, you've got two tabs, one for desktop and one for hover. Desktop's when your mouse is not on it, basically. And hover, funnily enough, is from when your mouse is on it. So when the mouse is on it, we want it to be right side up. So I'm going to flip that back to zero or simply type a zero in there. There we go. Great. Now the other thing that we want is when we're not hovering over it, we don't want to see it at all. We just want to see the actual image itself. Then when we are hovering over it, we want this to float in. 
So let's save this and go ahead and position our image or put our image in the actual row itself. So I'm going to go back to the green tab for the row. We're working on column three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm going to go into number three here, content tab, down to background. I'm going to pop an image in. So let's pop that one in. OK, of course, we can't see it because we've got a background on there, but I know it's in there. Now, while we're in the actual column settings of the row, when this flips, the whole thing is going to turn around like this because it's not a square. Well, because of the shape of it, when it turns, it's going to spill out of our column here. And I don't want to be able to see it outside the column. And anything that spills out of the column is called overflow. So what we can do is go over to advanced to visibility and we've got horizontal and vertical overflow. I'm going to change both of those to hidden which means when those corners rotate you're not going to see them spilling out around here. Great so we're good to go with our column let's go back in here and fix this the way we want it. Save the row back into the module. Okay so when we hover over it don't want to see anything and sorry when we hover over it we want to see the full thing when we're not hovering it over it we want to see nothing but I also want to give it a bit of a background so we can see some of our picture through but still read the writing so on the content tab let's go down to background at the moment it's got that default blue on it you can use any color you want I think I'm gonna just use black but I'm gonna pull the opacity slider down so I clicked on the black color then just click in the color panel up here. Opacity slider is right here. I'm going to pull it down so I can see enough of the image but still read the writing. I think I actually changed my color when I did that. There we go. So still see those little flowers behind but you can read that writing quite well. I know it's upside down but it won't be when we hover on it. Okay, and the next thing is I don't want to see this at all until we hover over it. So if we go over to our design tab, down to filters, we've got all kind of filters to play with. The one that we want to use today is opacity or transparency, just like we did with the color there. Okay, and again, if we hover over the dark writing, we can pull up a desktop and a hover state. For when we're not hovering over it, desktop, don't want to see it at all just want to see that nice picture when we are hovering over it little arrow we want it to be fully visible and as you see because we've got the hover selected it's correct way up there and I've got our little call to action button there and we can still see some of that image behind so that's going to work great so we're actually almost done here now the default time it takes once you put your mouse over to go from desktop to hover state or invisible to visible if you like with this module by default is 300 milliseconds with the Divi theme. I like to slow it down for a bit of drama and if you want to slow it down or speed it up pop over to the advanced tab, roll down to transitions and here we've got transition duration. I like to pull mine up for drama, I'm going to pull mine up to about 7, 750 something like that. It's milliseconds so that's three quarters of a second don't want any delay I want it to happen as soon as they put their mouse on it if you want to have them put their mouse on it and wait a few milliseconds put your value in there speed transition curve that I like to use for this is ease in and ease out now they're all slightly different some will work better than others in certain situations so check them out as to what works for you but for my hover effects that ease in and ease out seems to work perfectly so if we've done everything correctly, we should be good to go. Let's save our changes. We'll save the page changes. Save draft or publish. And let's exit the visual builder. Roll on down to where we were working. And there's our little picture of the flowers. There we go. When we put our mouse over it, we've got our call to action spinning in there. 
And if people are mousing around your site and that happens, it's going to get their attention. That's a nice little feature to have on your site. And of course on tablets and mobiles, you can just click on it to trigger this effect. So there you go guys, there's an image to spin in call to action. Really easy to do with the Divi theme. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, comment, share, ring the bell and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.